Welcome to the beginning of the kick drum technique series where we're breaking down all the core fundamentals of bass drum technique and right foot technique in four consecutive lesson videos. Today we're learning how we can make any bass drum pedal feel more high-end and expensive by optimizing a few key adjustment points on the pedal. If you aren't happy with how your bass drum pedal feels right now, keep watching because we're gonna fix that. Hey everybody, welcome to The Non-Glamorous Drummer where we're all about learning the core drumming skills that help you make music faster. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. You saw it in the thumbnail. Today we're doing sort of a fun gear comparison between two different pedals here. We've got this $50 basic single pedal by Griffin, and then we've got a $330 DW9000 single pedal right here, right next to it. And so what we wanna to do today is compare these, talk about some of the differences, but also talk about how you can really get the feel of a lower end pedal up to maybe 75% of that of a nice pedal. Uh, obviously there are differences and you can only make a lower end pedal feel so good, but you can get a lot closer to a really good feel than you think, even with a cheap pedal. Don't feel like you've got to upgrade your pedal just yet if you're on a budget. Number one, optimize beater angle and length. And really length is the biggest thing there. I mean, as long as you've got your angle at a decent spot, then length is really the big factor that will greatly affect the feel of your pedal, even with just slight adjustments. Uh, what's kind of interesting here with the DW9000 pedal, I've noticed just using it lately, I just bought this pedal a couple weeks ago, I've already used it on a bunch of gigs and it's been great. If I just lengthen the beater like a quarter inch, there's a huge difference in the feel versus if I have it right here. And so what I've learned, I've got my memory lock placed in a certain spot where if I want the pedal to feel kind of light and fast, I'll keep it here. If I want it to feel a little bit heavier for maybe louder playing, or on a bigger drum, maybe like a 24 inch kick, then I'll just extend it just a quarter inch. And that's a huge feel difference, but it's perfect. So of course the same goes for the Griffin pedal. And with this one, the way this pedal's set up, it allows you to actually extend the beater way out. And so if you want a really heavy feel out of this pedal, you can totally get it. Cause you can see how much slack I've got here and how much further I could go. But in comparing these, I got this beater to exactly where the pedal felt as much like this one as possible and it's not actually out all the way. These are very similar beaters. Um, there's generally not anything crazy special about a DW beater versus somebody else's beater. They're all very similar. They're plastic on the end and they've got felt and whatnot. And so if you've got a beater like this, then you've got a little bit of weight there on it. And so that's gonna help you get that heavier feel that you probably want. The thing to think about with beater length is it's a lot like where you're gripping your stick. If you wanna play loudly, you're not gonna hold the stick right here. It doesn't make sense to be holding your sticks here and hitting really hard, that's silly. But if you're playing really quietly, that might make sense. But most of the time we wanna grip where we're able to also play quietly, but play as loud as we need to too. And so really you wanna hold closer to the end of the stick. And so the same thing applies with your beater length. If you want a heavier feel, then extend the beater out longer, just like with your stick, how it feels tremendously heavier when you hold right here. Or if you want a lighter feel, maybe go a little further up, but you only wanna go so light. You wanna make sure you've got enough beater to work with. And make sure you're giving yourself enough angle, enough beater angle to work with, because that's very similar to stick height. In the same way, we're gonna hit a drum hard, we're not gonna start right here. We can kinda of hit it hard from right here, but that takes a lot of extra effort and we're having to really squeeze tight. And um, in other words, we'd have to really stomp the beater down, really bury it to get some volume. No, it makes more sense to let the stick come up here, have a full stroke, much better. And so the exact same thing applies with a bass drum pedal. Don't shy away from a lot of angle. Really the only reason why some guys don't wanna have as much angle as we've got right here, or you can even go a little more, honestly. A tad bit more angle wouldn't be a bad thing, but I think this is my sweet spot. The reason some guys shy away from this is because as you're playing, the beater can potentially come back and hit the top of your foot or maybe your shin, depending on where you've got your foot placed, how big your foot is, whatever. You can avoid that by making sure your foot is always in contact with the foot plate. If you think about it, in order for the beater to come back far enough to hit your foot, look at how high the foot plate's having to go. There's no reason the foot plate should go that high if your foot is always on it. So never stomp the pedal and then leave it. Never go, never play like that. Always keep part of your foot in contact. Even if maybe your foot skips or bounces just a little bit, depending on what you're playing, make sure that your default is to always come back onto it. So you're always maintaining control over the pedal and that'll keep the beater from coming back. And so that way you can have a big beater angle that allows you to really get some volume and really get some speed and not have to worry about it hitting your, your foot. And by the way, that 
technique of keeping your foot in contact with the foot plate. That applies whether or not you're playing heel up or heel down. Uh, if you're playing heel down, well, you've probably got your heel always in contact down here, but you want to make sure that by default, you've got the rest of your foot making contact as well. If you're playing heel up, you just want to make sure that after you play, your foot comes back to rest there on the pedal to keep it under control. And so as you can see here, I pretty much adjusted the angle exactly the same for both of these. The length is roughly the same also because the beaters are very similar. And so as far as the beater length and angle goes, these are as similar as they can be and they're feeling pretty close to each other. So the big pedal optimization point number two is spring tension. And this is one that maybe is a little less interesting to talk about because I can't really show you exactly what my spring tension is because that can't really be conveyed unless you're right here playing the pedals. And so all I can do is really give you some guidelines for finding your spring tension sweet spot. Obviously you wanna adjust your spring tension according to beater weight. If you've got a really heavy beater on here, then you're gonna want a little more spring tension than if you've got a light beater. Here on my other pedal, I've got a Vader Bomber beater on here, um, which honestly is probably about the same weight as one of these. Um, obviously it gives you a lighter sound, it's not as heavy of a sound, but the beater itself probably weighs about the same. But if you've got one of those maybe old school, like really old vintage, or a super low end pedal that just has like the marshmallow shaped, felt beater at the top, those are often a lot more lightweight. So if you have one of those, you probably don't want a whole lot of spring tension. And you could experiment with that if you were to buy a nicer pedal later, practice interchanging the beaters and just see how that relationship is. But big thing is don't have the spring tension so tight that you feel like it's actually difficult to hit the drum or you feel like the beater is slowing down before it hits the drum head because that's definitely what we don't want. But at the same time, we want enough spring tension to provide that false rebound in a sense, the same way that when we hit a drum, the stick's bouncing right back and we wanna make sure our beater does the same thing. Otherwise, it's impossible to play fat. Well, I say impossible. It's a lot harder to play fast where it requires a lot more foot technique and foot muscle really to play fast. So we wanna make things as easy on our foot and on our technique down here as possible. We wanna make sure we've got enough of that tension to really have some motion to make sure that the pedal is really just moving naturally and bouncing back from the head quickly. I know for me, the way I have this tension adjusted, you'll be able to see from the top view uh, camera up here. When I place my foot on the pedal, that's where the, the beater just comfortably rests. And if I sit forward a little bit and put a little bit of pressure on there, kind of the beater's natural resting spot without me thinking about pressing is still like this far off the head. And if I lean forward a little bit, put a little more pressure on, I'm hitting the head. But it still, it definitely requires a little bit of pressure to get it on there. And right now, the spring tension I have on this pedal might be a little too much for a beginner student if they're like a eight or nine year old kid probably. But I think it's a good tension to have once you've built up some of that muscle just because. It makes it very easy to play fast and get a lot of beater motion going and so it feels very effortless that way. And so don't shy away from maybe a tighter spring tension just make sure it's not so tight that it's hard to press the pedal down or you feel like the beater's slowing down before it hits the head. And if I were to get comfortable here in a heel up position, then I could rest my foot here on the pedal without consciously pressing down and the beater will be on the head. Obviously, if it wasn't making it all the way to the head with my leg weight on it, that would be too much spring tension. So it's kind of just common sense. Use common sense, find your sweet spot. Don't stress about it too much. Don't overthink the spring tension. You kind of just have to play with it until it feels about right, which is exactly what I did with the Griffin pedal. Because this one, I, I haven't touched the spring tension on this one. The DW pedals come in great spring tension straight from the factory, no reason to mess with it. And so I played around with this one a little bit to try to get it to feel more like this one. And really all I did was tighten it a little bit. I, I gave the Griffin pedal a little bit more spring tension. And so sitting here feeling it with my hands, they feel about the same. Something else you might notice is that with a, a heavier all metal pedal like this one, when you do this, it'll keep bobbing back and forth for quite a while. Um, I have these sitting here on this drum stool, so this is absorbing some of the energy. But if they were sitting on the floor, they would both go even longer. Um, but this one doesn't bob for quite as long because it is a lighter weight pedal, so there's not as much momentum. Um, all of the mechanics here aren't quite as heavy as they are here, so just a side note. Something else really interesting, as far as spring tension and beater weight goes, you can actually adjust the weight of your beater more easily than you think, and it doesn't actually require that much weight to find a, a really noticeable difference. So the DW pedal comes with this little beater weight. It kind of is basically just looks like a memory lock, but it's made of metal, it's got a little bit of weight you can slide it up and down the beater. And that 
makes a huge difference in how the pedal feels. It's not much weight, but when you slide that up here, you can definitely tell. And so most of the time, I don't want that much extra weight, and so I'll keep it right here. Um, but it's very much, it very much creates the exact same feel as if you were to lengthen the beater by about a quarter of an inch. So somewhere there's probably a ratio there, and some nerd out there has probably calculated this, but adding such and such amount of weight up here is equivalent to adding such and such amount of length, because those are very proportional. And so if you add length, it's the equivalent of adding weight. And so if you wanted to make your cheat pedal feel heavier, either find something like this, um, or what I did with this one, I just took the memory lock and slid it up to here. I decided I was willing to sacrifice the use of the memory lock and just slide it up here to give the pedal a little more weight, which actually helped out a lot. So it is possible that maybe this is a heavier beater than this one, and sliding the Griffin memory lock up to here helped this pedal just feel a little bit more expensive. I don't mind not having the memory lock down here. I think it's kind of cool having it up here instead. It feels really good to me. And you can do that without sliding the memory lock up. If you take like a little nut or a couple washers, just tiny pieces of anything, even like a tiny little magnet or something, get creative and stick it up here, gaff tape it, whatever you wanna do, tiny little bits of weight will make a huge difference. You really don't have to do a lot. A little bit goes a long way, so play around with that. And if you do have a lighter weight beater, you want it to feel heavier, you wanna be able to use that pedal maybe on a smaller kick drum, so you need a shorter beater length, but you want it to still feel heavy and high end, that's the way to go. If you're having to use a shorter beater length, then just add the weight and that'll help out. And so in my case here, I was using this pedal the other day on a 24 inch kick. This is a 22. I was using it on a 24, so I wanted a little bit more beater length, and so I definitely didn't need the weight up here. But if I were gonna use this pedal on an 18 inch kick, I might wanna either keep it here or maybe shorten it a tad bit, but I'd definitely slide the weight up to compensate for that. So you get the idea. And pedal optimization point three, this is one that's kind of overlooked, but it's definitely an important part of pedal maintenance and making an old pedal feel like new. And that is oil up your pedal. It's very possible that your pedal's getting squeaky, it's getting stiff, and you haven't even noticed because it's just been so long since you've oiled it. So take some, this is my favorite, dry lube. You can get the stuff at Walmart, Home Depot, Amazon. I'll throw a link in the description. But you can spray this onto all of the moving parts of your pedal, like the, the points here where the spring connects and the points up here. Uh, basically any joints and any spots where you can see that there's potential friction. And if your pedal's brand new, it's been very well oiled and you're probably not gonna need to touch it for a while. But if you ever notice that it just feels like it's not as fast and smooth as it used to be, or you're starting to hear a squeak, then that's definitely a sign to oil it up. This pedal, this Gibraltar one that I've used for a long time, usually every couple of years, I'll notice, oh, I really need to oil this thing up. And every time I do that, it makes a huge difference. And so, um, you know, it all depends on the pedal, uh, but I'd encourage you keep up with that. And if you do feel like Maybe there's a chance your pedal would feel a little more like new with some fresh oil, do that. And to my understanding, dry lube is a good way to go with this just because it's not messy. But if you have a really old pedal and you're working with rust and you're trying to clean it, WD-40 is a good way to go um, because it's meant to break down stuff like that. But otherwise, if you're just oiling up a pedal that's in good shape, dry lubricant is very good for that. So to sum all this up, I know we've been throwing a lot of stuff out there today, but I hope you've been sticking with me and staying along for the ride because this applies to Every pedal out there, and if you have a lower end pedal, this is definitely gonna help you get a better feel out of it. So our first thing was adjust the beater angle, basically to have as much angle as possible within you know, comfort. You don't wanna have crazy angle, but have a pretty good angle. Try to adjust yours like this. This works really well. Adjust the beater length to fine tune the heaviness, and if, you, if you're playing a large drum, yeah, adjust that length, get the, get the beater way out there. That'll make the pedal feel a little heavier and have a little more momentum. Or if you're playing a smaller drum and you need to keep the beater shorter, then add some weight up here to compensate for it. And then just adjust your spring tension accordingly. Um, if you're doing a shorter beater that maybe doesn't weigh as much, go a little bit less spring tension. If you're doing a longer beater that's heavier, more spring tension, you get the idea. It's just common sense. And lastly, get yourself some dry lube. Either check out the link in the description below or go to Walmart, go to Home Depot, get some of that and keep your pedals oiled up because that'll definitely make sure that they're feeling smooth and feeling fast for years and they're not gonna get stiff and squeaky on you. Hey, I hope this video helped you out. I hope all these points uh, help you to make your lower end pedal feel really good or make your high end pedal feel even better and continue to feel good. And I hope this has helped to encourage you too. If maybe you're on a budget and you don't have a super nice pedal, you can definitely make a lower end pedal work just fine. Hey, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and also go check out the link below to download my free guide 
five simple steps to conquering smooth, fast hi-hat 16ths, one-handed hi-hat 16ths. That's one of those elusive things that a lot of drummers work on and don't really get results working on because they just don't know how to practice it. So go check out the free guide, it's really simple and the whole method is just broken down into five steps. You can get the molar technique going, figure out your stick placement, and that's gonna help you a ton in getting some much faster results if you're trying to play a Rosanna shuffle and you're trying to figure out how does Procaro get that sound and you just wanna get smooth, effortless 16s, that's your resource. Go check it out, it's totally free. And I'll also send you some additional email tips for freeing up your left foot and really building up some more coordination and working that left foot technique because that's a big deal too. As always guys, thanks so much for watching and stick around for the next video in the series where we're gonna talk about should we bury or bounce the bass drum beater. It's going to get controversial and it's going to be a lot of fun. So I'll see you then. Have a good week.